Welcome to Tricker CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Onefini Elite. Today, we zero like a pro. Here you can see my 3D probe loaded into my chuck. It is in place of a tool that I would zero against the XYZ touch block. It's just going to touch the tip against the surfaces of the part. And because the probe is mechanical, it will sense when it's touching the part and that will trigger the zeroing off of that surfaces. And that will trigger the zeroing off of that surface. Now you can see that the light changes blue when we touch the side of the part. And that's a nice visual indication there. Uh, Z works the same way. We just probe Z and it'll turn blue. And if you didn't have the magnetic cable connected to the probe, the probe wouldn't move. The Maso would throw an alarm and nothing would be damaged. You don't have to worry about making sure you have the magnet there or you risk breaking something. So which one did I buy? Well, I bought the DIG 3D LP M from Topcom CZ, the same company that I got the tool setter from. Now, they again, they come in lots of different configurations. Um, I chose the PNP because it's easier configuration, the normal close because it's safer, that I know that the machine knows it's there or it won't move. It's a, I got the six millimeter shaft diameter, which fits in a quarter inch collet. You're just finger tightening it anyway, so nothing to worry about there. One meter cable length, uh, totally fine with me. Sealed, yes, tip. Um, I got the Ruby two millimeter tip. Uh, maybe that's unnecessary, that's just what I did. And that is the unit that I got. Now, let's look at the setup. Before wiring this unit, you wanna make sure the system's turned off and you're gonna have three pins to wire to. The brown goes to power, can be any old power. And you might notice here, I have two wires going to power. That's because in the same ferrule, I crimped both the tool setter and the probe because they're both very low current draw and I'm running short on terminals. So I needed to, to save some somehow. But, but the brown goes to power, the blue, goes to ground, and again, I doubled up, and the black goes to the input, and here I'm gonna use input 17. Now we have it wired up, and I can see here on my input 17, it's blank, and my normal input 12 is still set to probe. And if I come over here, try to do this, and just touch it lightly, you can see that it toggles to, from low to high, and that tells me it's working. Also notice that it's changing the LED light from white to blue, which gives me a visual indication at the probe whether it's plugged in and working correctly, white and blue, that it's being triggered. Pretty awesome. Like most people, I have an XYZ touch block. Mine, I assume like most others, is wired up by default to input 12. And I'm gonna use that as part of my setup, so I still wanna make sure it's working. I'm gonna touch the magnet to the aluminum block just to see that it's working correctly. And as I see that high low, it's working correctly. And if you didn't know, when you do that on other screens, that probe turns to green. Now that's reasonably easy to see here, but with my eyes and my shop from a distance, I can't freaking tell if that's green or not. So I often have to go here to see if that's working or not. And that's another reason why it's nice to have a 3D Pro because I don't have to do that. I can see that it's working without having to look at anywhere on the Maso. Now for setting this up, for the most part, I'm gonna be following the Maso documentation. I'll try to remember to put this URL in the description. Um, there's a couple different methods they have here. One for using a solid aluminum non spring loaded plate, which is not what I have and not what I would recommend you have. That spring is nice. Make sure you don't smash into things. You got a second to hit the stop button if you need to. Uh, 
and then the other method for the switch setter method or switch tool setter method. This is the one that if you have a normal tool setter, this is what uh, we're going to be using. Uh, now this is a little bit different, a little bit more, I guess, complicated because these things are both have springs in them and they'll work against each other. So we have to set the, the, the tool length of the probe through a different process where we're not measuring it off the tool setter because we don't know which one's going to give how much or first. So for the most part, I'm going to follow this documentation. So um, you could do it this way, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. And I think my way is a little bit better. So um, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go into the jogging and probing screen and set the probing diameter to 2.03 which is what I measured the diameter of my probe tip to be. And then I'm going to set the X offset to zero, the Y offset to zero, and the Z position to zero. I'm doing that because we're not going to be using the touch block when we have the probe set up. So there's nothing between the probe and the work surface that we're zeroing off of. So that's zero. Once we have that, click save and exit probing. Then we go into the MDI screen and we're going to change to a tool. I'm going to use T5 or tool five. So that's T5 M6 and the spindle moves into the tool change location. And I'm going to grab the wrenches and put tool five in the collet. And then I press cycle start and the spindle moves to the tool center and we wait for it to touch off. Now we're doing this to establish a relative length of this particular tool given where our tool setter is mounted. We need that so that we can later establish the relative length of the probe. So this is where we're going to use the XYZ touch block to measure the tool and to set the DRO for us. So I touch the magnet to the touch block to see that it's working. Put the magnet on the collet, just like normal, and position the spindle over the touch block. And then jog down to where I'm pretty close. I don't have to probe very far. Once we're pretty close, we go hit the button and zero this tool. Okay. Now we are done using the touch block, so we're going to add the tool number for the probe. I use one, click save, and then I'm going to select not use on input 12 where my touch block was and put probe on input 17. Then we go back to the MDI screen and we're going to change to the probe. I used again tool one, so that's T1 M6. Click run. Back to the tool change location, grab the wrenches, take tool five out. Now when I put the probe in, I'm just going to finger tighten this thing. I don't want to have to worry about did I over tighten it and change the Z height by some minuscule amount. So I just finger tighten it. Really nice thing about this magnetic cable, it holds the probe in place. I don't have to actually hold it up into position. The magnets do that for me. So I know it's exactly in the same position every time. Once I'm done, I can see that the mass is telling me hit cycle start. And then it tells me it's not going to measure the length of that tool, which is perfect because it's probe. We don't want it to. Then it's back to setup to the auto tool zero and to disable auto tool zero. Once we're done with that, we go into the tools and offsets, select our touch probe and change the Z offset to zero and click save. Now we put the touch block back in place and now it's just serving as the surface that we measured off of before. We're not going to have to connect the magnet or anything like that. The probe is now the probe and it's going to know when it touches that surface. So I'm going to jog down to where I'm pretty darn close, you know, within five, 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to go down a click at a time 
until the probe turns blue. And I'm doing this on 10 times on the pendant. And I stop and I'll go another click after it turns blue. And then I look at the machine Z chord and it's negative 107.4. So I'm going to back the probe up a little bit. Now I'm going to go in and run a manual probing cycle with a G38.2 command. So I did enter in the MDI screen G38.2 and Z and then I'm going to use a value slightly lower than that value that I saw that I saw in my machine coordinates that I saw negative 107.4 so I'm going to use negative 107.5 and then I'm going to specify F100 for speed and click run. At that point the spindle is going to probe until it turns blue and stop. This is going to be the location that is exactly where the probe is touching the touch block. So I look at my DRO Z value and that's negative 124.025. So I go to my tools and offsets and enter that value in my Z offset. Negative 124.025. Take a moment here. The mass of documentation says enter the negative value of what was in your DRO Z offset. For me, the negative value is the value that I saw. I'm not sure if that's what they meant or if they meant to multiply that times negative one, end up with a 124.025 positive. If I did that, it wouldn't work properly. Don't worry, we're gonna test to make sure it's right before we do anything that can harm anything. And click save. So now I'm going to back the probe back up again, just a little bit, and I'm going to run that same probing cycle that I ran before. So back to the MDI screen and just select the same value I entered once before and click run. And the machine's going to probe down, stop where it hits blue, and I'll go back to the masso and look at my DRO and see that the Z is zero. That tells me that it's working like it should, and I have it set up properly. If you don't see zero there, maybe you have the sign inverted or you've, you've measured something incorrectly, stop now, go back and fix that problem before you move forward. Once we're done, we go back to the setup screen to auto tool zero and re-enable auto tool zero. Now we're done, we're just gonna test things. So back to the MDI screen. We're gonna change, in my case, to t tool two with a T2M6. And I'm using tool two because it's not the tool I used first. It's a completely different tool. It's going to be mounted differently in the collet. So grab my wrenches and put tool two in. Once I'm done, I hit cycle start and the machine measures off tool two. And once it turns blue, it's back to the original location we started with. And I can jog down to where I'm just over, barely over the touch block, which is that surface we were trying to zero to. And my intent here is to try to get real close so that when I look at my, my DRO position, I can see that it's very, very close to zero. In this po point, I absolutely believe that I'm 0 0.175 millimeters above the touch block, and that means I have completed the installation successfully.